In 2004, we won Britain in Bloom. It was a beautiful place to be, a great town, bustling. All the shops were busy. Now it's a dead zone. There's nothing left of Newcastle anymore. Even I'm shutting my business down because I've had enough. On this high street alone, things have popped back open, but you'll see a lot of pound shops, a lot of charity shops, and it's just, there's no, there's no investment. There's no drive to, to make things better for people in Newcastle. They've got to change the NHS. The Conservatives have not put enough money in. It keeps saying, oh, I've put 2.5 2. billion. That's nowhere near enough. 50,000 migrants have come into this country. We can't have 50,000 people coming in the state of the country as it is at the moment. I can tell you I won't be voting Conservative, mm -hmm. uh, but I won't be voting Labour either. I am leading towards reform. I like Nigel Farage and he'll answer a question directly, whereas the other politicians won't. It just feels like it's all the same. I think nobody tells the truth. They're all a bunch of liars. They're not listening to us. They don't really care what we have to say. And they're going to get a real wake-up call, I think, when we poll. We're in Newcastle under Lyme. This constituency had a Labour MP for as long as Labour has been a political entity. 2019, they moved to Conservative. What do you think that was down to? Um, well, um, Brexit maybe. I think Brexit played a big part. I don't know, maybe Aaron Bell um, swayed a lot of voters. Uh, I do know I've not been to one of his um, the, the meetings he holds with, with local people, but my friends have, and they were trying to bring up valid points and all people wanted to talk about was potholes and um, sort of trivial, well, my opinion, trivial issues. Um, so I don't know, I think you get a lot of disillus disillusioned people and someone comes in and says a load of things that, that we them over, but what's changed? Nothing's changed. I think it was Boris, wasn't the Boris effect. Mm. I think that was part of it. I mean. It turned out that it wasn't quite what he seemed to be, yeah. and I think his true colours have been have come back, uh, uh, come back. He's shown his true colours uh, in the way he acted, in the way he allowed people to act uh, mm -hmm. over the parties and over the, 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 the stuff that went on. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think people are sort of making their own minds up now. I certainly, I never voted Conservative. I've always voted Labour because that's that's the way I vote. Mm -hmm. You know, I just think the. They seem to do all right, and then they get kicked out, and then the Conservatives come in and seem to make, they've made a, a real hash of things, haven't they? What issue, issues matter most to you? Mm, the price of items and how the town is developed, yeah. How, when you say about how the town is developed, what do you mean exactly? Okay, like I can see like many shops are shutting, shutting down because there's like no business. And I've heard from people that Newcastle is just not a good town it's, and other towns are better and they don't like the town because I don't know there's not much hype. I've lived in this town since 2003 and in 2004 we won Britain in bloom it was a beautiful place to be a great town bustling all the shops were busy now it's a dead zone now we've literally got beggars on every corner um, there's it's just there's no shops all the shops are charities or, or vape shops or news agents and that's it there's nothing left of Newcastle anymore even I'm shutting my business down because I've had enough. I work with children and families so I kind of come across loads of people from all walks of life and like I say a lot of the time it is they're just really struggling mm -hmm. the low income families are, are really struggling just to make day by day mm -hmm. um, and I think those are the things that are really stoke on Trent is really struggling with um, on this high street alone, things have popped back open, but you'll see a lot of pound shops, a lot of charity shops, and it's just, there's no, there's no investment. There's no drive to, to make things better for people in Newcastle or people in the city of Stoke-on-Trent. Are there any pressing local issues that you feel like he has been vocal on in the last five years or? I mean, there's the there's a big issue with uh, well, there's quarry. So there's stop the stink. There's a place near here, um, Silverdale, which is um, which has basically been yeah, it's been the landfill site, uh, and it's caused um, horrible smell to, to just waft all around the area. People in Silverdale, there's children with health conditions, problems. Um, I think I do feel like the I'll give him that that the, he's been quite vocal about that, um, but I still think you're allowing these big corporations, companies to. To still continue with the landfill site, I don't know. I, I, has it again? Is it is it is still there? Is it stopped? No. Until 2026, I think they have the contract there. Cool. Yeah. So, still so then, yeah, it'll still. Yeah. But maybe I'll give him that. At least that that's been.
Mm. I feel like maybe that's been something. This constituency, Newcastle under Lyme, voted for Aaron Bell, the Conservative candidate, last time round. Yeah. It's the first Conservative candidate you've had since the foundation and of the Labour promised, Party. He promised the earth, he promised to stop the stink. We've got a landfill down in Silverdale. Mm. He promised us that he would do something about it. Nothing has been done. Every day our house is engulfed with the smell of rotten eggs. Mm. Uh, even Aaron Bell even took the stop the stink thing to Boris Johnson. Uh, and still nothing has been done. We still have trucks after trucks every day going down to Silverdale, dumping God knows what waste, and the town just stinks because mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. So again, no, no belief in Aaron Bell or anything he says. Mm -hmm. It's disgusting. Yeah. I mean, all you have to do, if, if you come out of your house in the middle of the night, 1 a.m., every night, it stinks. It's like they turn a tap on and let the smell out. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely vile. Uh, I live in Crossheath, which is not far from Silverdale, and every now and again you'll get a whiff of this stink. And you think, how do those people cope? Mm. Why hasn't somebody done something about it before now? Aaron Bell's been saying, I'm doing this and I'm doing that. What's the environmental agency doing about it? What are they doing about it? Why haven't they stopped him? Mm. They're supposed to have capped it with clay, aren't they? Mm. Uh, as far as I'm aware. But it, you still get it, you still smell it. And those people that live there must feel abandoned because mm. nobody's doing anything about it. The Labour candidate and the other candidates have also been pushing that they will advocate for the closure of the landfill. Do you believe any of them? Nope. It's all, it's all false lies. I believe it when I see it. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, that's pretty much all I've got to say on it, to be honest. I can tell you I won't be voting Conservative, mm -hmm. uh, but I won't be voting Labour either. Because mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think either of them are going to do anything, to be honest. Do you mind me asking who you are thinking about voting for? I'm undecided at the moment, but okay. I am leading towards reform. Um, reform, you said? Yeah. What's that? I like Nigel Farage. I like the fact that he says what he's thinking mm -hmm. and he's honest mm -hmm. and he'll answer a question directly whereas the other politicians won't. The only credible opposition mm. is the Labour. I, I'm not sure about the policies. I don't think they've costed them out properly. I'm not sure. The, the money uh, is too much for my little brain to... The billions and billions. What's a billion? I have no idea what that is. Mm -hmm. But um, You've got to do something about it. The Conservatives aren't doing us any favours. They've certainly not done me as a pensioner any favours. Mm -hmm. uh, and yet they're supposed to look after it. Although we've had the, the rises, mm -hmm. but I'm now paying tax on a, on, a, on a pension. It's not right. They've got to change the NHS. Mm -hmm. The Conservatives have not put enough money in. He keeps saying, oh, I've put 2.5 2. billion. That's nowhere near enough. Mm -hmm. And I've been to this... Um, hospital twice, emergency place, and it's chock-a-block. There's people all over the place, and the nurses come and say, well, listen, uh, we, we haven't got the staff, we're overrun. Mm -hmm. And I said, fair enough, and so I went again, and it was just the same, it's shocking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, we waited for two and a half hours, and because uh, my wife's blood pressure was sky high. And um, the nurse came and said, look, I'm really sorry, but there's been an emergency and, uh, with, about the doctor. And I said to her, have you only got one doctor in the hospital? Mm -hmm. I said, it's not your fault, no, that's fair enough. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the other thing is I looked in the, uh, the sun this morning 50,000 migrants have come into this country. We can't, it's far too many. Mm -hmm. We can't have 50,000 people coming in the state of the country as it is at the moment. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like your voice is heard by politicians? Absolutely not. I think we've had, is it 14 years now of Tory yeah. uh, government? And they just, they just don't care. And I'm not saying Labour's any better, to be fair. They just seem to be probably going the same way as the Tories are, really. Just feel like Tories have taken on a more hard line, like the right approach, and then the Labour has taken on their kind of role. So it just feels like it's all the same. I think nobody tells the truth. They're all a bunch of liars. Um, and they just don't listen to us. I don't think people of Stoke-on-Trent are ever heard. Mm. Things that matter to us that just seem to be overlooked and they're just like, I don't know, I think they got complacent for a very long time and now they've had to do this snap general election and I think it's given a massive wake-up call because people are just like, we've had enough mm -hmm. with all the parties. This two, two party system for us is not working. Mm. And that's why I've seen a lot of independent candidates pop up.
because people just want an alternative because mm. we can't trust the main main parties um, like investment in children's services investment in social care it's so low it's ridiculous mm -hmm. so yeah but I think we're they're not listening to us they don't really care what we have to say and they're going to get a real wake-up call I think when me the poll Keir Starmer is most likely going to be the Prime Minister after this election. Everything you've just said there, how do you feel like he's settling as the person to resolve these issues? I don't. Full blank. I don't think he's got the balls. He's not got the balls, you say? No, I don't think he has. <laughs> I don't think <laughs> he's got the balls uh -huh. to do anything. He's just, I think this is the problem with the Conservatives of Labour, they're just interested in winning the election. Are they really interested? in the people of this country mm -hmm. or is it just their own agenda and at the moment it just comes across that these political parties it's just their own agenda it's just about slagging the other party off not actually answering any questions directly. Keir Starmer is most likely going to be the Prime Minister next week. Yes. How do you feel about him leading the country? Brilliant. Mm -hmm. I think he'll do a great job. Mm -hmm. I really do. Well I hope so. Who knows until after the election what what will really happen mm. we don't know mm. uh, so i'm just hoping as labor when i don't know if it's easy or just about as long as they win and get this country back where it was